Good morning, high tide traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. Your home for MJ Stocks, Crypto Assets, and Interviews. Today is Tuesday, January 31st. It's the last day of the month. Hope you're well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing just a high level overview of high tide. Uh, they reported 2022 and Q4 financial results last night. Bit of a mixed bag, and a lot of people asking my opinions and what to expect when the market opens today. Uh, so I wanted to make a quick video and just Go over exactly that. Uh, we'll do some technical analysis. We'll skim the uh, the results here. But like I said, a bit of a mixed bag. So before we get to it, make sure to smash like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe. Tick the bell to be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Uh, high Tide, uh, full disclosure, I do own quite a, a large position in this retailer and uh, something to remind ourselves is retailers are not LPs. Uh, high Tide, uh, definitely one of the leaders in the space and had a milestone quarter in terms of revenue. Um, so High Tide releases, un, uh, sorry, releases audited 2022 financial results featuring record fourth quarter revenue of 108.2 million and record adjusted EBITDA of 5 million. So this came out a little bit later yesterday after market close. And they also mention here that the company signed a letter of intent with Berlin-based health and life science company Sanity Group to better take advantage of potential German adult use MJ legalization, which we know is imminent, uh, more than likely going to be at some point later in this year, if not the beginning of 2024. So this news release, uh, going through this here, uh, current annual revenue run exceeds $450 million, maintaining high tides position as Canada's top revenue generating MJ company. And the company celebrated its 11th consecutive quarter of positive adjusted EBITDA. The company now counts approximately 4.5 million total customers globally across all platforms, which I am one of them. I pretty much only shop at Canada Cabana. Company's brick and mortar location generated some st uh, same store sales growth of 50% year over year, 9% sequentially in the fourth quarter of 2022. Largest non-franchise retailer in Canada with 151 locations and approximately 950,000 Cana uh, Cabana Club members, making it the largest brick and mortar MJ loyalty program in Canada and paid elite membership upgrades exceeded 6,000 members since the launch of first of its kind initiative in Canada at the end of November 2022. So as I mentioned, they did have a bit of a mixed bag and they posted record revenue. They eclipsed that 100 million mark uh, for the first time. And that's even in the face of adversity, adversity here with Canadian recreational MJ sales falling for the second straight month. So I was under the impression that we might miss in terms of revenue just because we beat the last five quarters and we had that slowing in sales. But high tide continues to be one of the leaders in that regard. And like I said, analysts were forecasting 99.93 million. It came in at 108.25 million. This is all in Canadian dollars. And uh, EPS, big miss on EPS. So if we scroll down here, you can see that the loss from operations, 53.9 million, and loss per basic and diluted share, eight, negative 0 0.85. And they were expecting, analysts were expecting negative 0 0.0733. So this is a big miss in terms of EPS. So they had a, a big beat, but a massive miss in terms of EPS. So that's why I'm leaning bearish. Stock was down about 10% pre-market, uh, currently sitting at $1.58 USD. So yeah, almost 10% at the moment, starting weekly consolidation. And... Uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's not to be uh, taken by surprise because we also had the broader market weakness as well, right? We knew SPY had been consolidating daily consolidation yesterday, crypto as well. So the whole broader market was seeing some weakness after some massive moves. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're wondering how we're going to open. Obviously, we can't go by pre-market this early. We want to wait until about 15 minutes or less before the market open. And you can't trust pre-market until about 15 minutes, in my opinion, before the market does open. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we started with some weakness. But uh, overall, this is looking really good. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't follow in uh, Organogram's footsteps and post uh, positive EPS. Uh, but I don't think that will be uh, too far uh, along the road here. Um, so I'm not going to go too, too much into all of these um, these talking points here. Uh, but if you want to check out all the financial highlights, I encourage you to do so. But like I said, big miss in terms of EPS. So I think that's going to overshadow the uh, the record revenue of 108.25 million. And uh, like I said, losing the low here pre-market and down almost 10%. Um, but like I said, it's not completely game over at this point. It's a monthly inside bar, actually two in a row now. So we have a very, very tight equilibrium and tightening range that is that is forming here. So we're just ranging and we have key resistance there at 190 and key support at 138. If we lose 138, we continue monthly consolidation in the monthly downtrend. And if we break resistance there at 190, we start the monthly bounce 
and then we look to resistance there at 223 and after 223 we have no monthly resistance all the way up to 589 so if we take a look at high tide on the weekly chart we did close the week last week over the 10-week moving average and this weakness that we're seeing here pre-market i think is just healthy right obviously uh, the broader market wasn't helping with the weakness over the last couple days and that's probably going to continue with the fomc rate decision into tomorrow and then big tech earnings on thursday so i think what is the most likely scenario is we either go flat or slightly down on the S&P 500 leading into that FOMC decision and interest rate uh, decision going into tomorrow, right? People are going to want to de-risk going into that very important economic data. So if, if I were to you know put my finger on it, I would say that we're likely going to see flat or slightly down in the broader market. That's going to be headwinds for high tide. Um, but like I said, just not surprising with the broader market pulling back a little bit after a big move. High tide did have a pretty big move there off the low of what, as well at about 130 uh, all the way up to about uh, 225 so i know a lot of people that took that trade and uh, i was one of the ones buying that tip and i'll continue to do so if they continue to give me these rock bottom prices but uh, like i said very big shareholder in uh, in high tide definitely one of my favorite uh, mj companies i think it's going to have long-term staying power and like i said i shop probably 90 uh, percent of the time i shop at canna cabana but very promising that we're seeing a 10-week uh, close over the 10-week moving average usually we want to see a couple of closes here we had uh, two green days that we came back and then we lost it again. So I want to see this time around, I want to see, uh, you know, multiple closes above that. And we want to continue to um, break out of this equilibrium. So if we can break out of this monthly inside bars bullish, I think we're going to see a big move. And like I said, as long as we continue to close over this 10 week moving, a moving average, then I think we're just fine. And the stochastic just had a bull cross as well. And the MACD has been bullish ever since August of 2020. In terms of the weekly moving averages, we do have the 50 weekly there at 224. If we can get a weekly candle close over that, we have a lot of runway until about 377. And something that uh, you can't lose sight of the fact of uh, this fact as well is the fact that we could see a golden cross. And that is when the 50 day moving average is below the 200 day moving average. So the shorter term below the longer term. When the 50 crosses up through the 200, that's called a golden cross. The last time that happened was when the price was at around $2 and then it ran all the way up to about 13 bucks. Then we had a death cross with the 50 above the 200, shorter term above the longer term. When the 50 crosses in that instance through the 200, that's called a death cross. That happened when the price was at around six, seven bucks and then we dropped to about $1.30. Now we had this massive buy signal, massive sell signal. Now we have another massive buy signal and it doesn't mean that it's gonna go to the moon tomorrow uh, or yesterday, right? We, we would love it to go to the moon yesterday, but it's probably gonna take at least a few weeks, if not a couple of months. In my opinion, look at what happened the last time. This crossed really in September of 2020, and then we didn't peak out in the price until about February 2021, right? So these things take time, and it's not something that happens, you know, over a day or a week. It's usually a course of a couple of months, right? So like I said, liking what I'm seeing, record revenue, just absolutely destroyed revenue estimates and get over that 100 million uh, milestone. But uh, EPS definitely overshadowing that. And with the broader market weakness, I wouldn't be surprised if we opened red. So if you're wondering what my thoughts and opinions, that's what I'll be expecting into the day today. And I'll be watching the most important chart on high tide will be the monthly chart. We'll be watching those double monthly inside bars would be a good opportunity, not financial advice, obviously not telling you to buy, sell or hold. It's for entertainment purposes only, but uh, could be a monster long if we break that resistance in the monthly inside bars and could be a monster short if we uh if we break the support levels but again just based on how beaten down we are uh, i wouldn't uh I i'd rather be on the long side of it so going down to there thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth with rob with power group if you'd like the video on your way out i would appreciate it share the video that might uh, anyone that might find value and we'll see you again on the next update take care